All right, uh, we are in chapter 10. And last week, we covered the basic um, fundamentals of energy transport, okay? Just a brief review, energy transport still is divided into two parts, molecular transport and convective transport in the same manner as what we did for momentum. But in energy, the combined flux is consisted of three parts, conduction, convection, and another part will be a flow work. Okay, so flow work will be extra terms combined into the convective transport. And last time I showed you how to rearrange the fluxes going in and out, as well as the flow work, external work, into the same equation as we learned in thermodynamics. Right, so that was chapter nine. For chapter 10, it contains examples, several examples for shear balance. And we will spend quite some time on the examples, okay? The first example for today would be the uh, copper rod. It's a solid rod with some length L with radius R suspended somehow in the environment, and there'll be electricity supply to the rod. The electricity supply with respect to the conductivity of the rod itself, if the rod is not perfect conductor, there'll be heat generated, okay? So if the heat generated can be calculated based on the current, electrical current density, square divided by electrical conductivity. Um, we want to know the temperature profile within the rod itself, okay? So if we take a look at what's, what was given to you as heat generated, look at the unit first, and we have to try to config, um, figure out what this SE term would be. Okay, first of all, if you look at the unit, the current would be ampere per centimeter square. Everything will be square divided by ohm, inverse of ohm, inverse of centimeter, like so. So if I put square inside the bracket, I would get ampere square centimeter per uh, power minus four. Okay? If I take ohm up here, you get ampere ohm, right? And another ampere here, because we have square of ampere. Centimeter here is minus four. If I cancel with this minus one, I end up with centimeter cube as a denominator, right? What is ampere ohm? According to electrical engineering that you have learned, this is current, this is resistance, IR, that's volt, right? So here is volt. And you have volt multiplied by ampere, that's IV. IV would be power, okay? So IV, the whole thing would be power as a watt. So you have watt per centimeter cube. Watt means joule per second. So this is energy per unit volume per time, okay? So this, in other words, would be rate of energy per volume. All right, that's energy per time, that means rate of energy. 
per volume. Now, if you look at the system, is there any flow? This is a copper rod plugged into some kind of electricity, so there is no flow within the system. If you define the rod itself as a system, okay, within the system, there is no flow. Electrical flow or electric, uh, flow of electrons does not count as a convective flow. There is no fluid, okay? It is just pure solid. So in this system, there is no convection, just conduction, all right? Now, just like what we discussed in momentum, you have to define the shape of the shell. In order to define the shape of the shell, you need to, um, if you recall what we did for momentum transport, we just analyze velocity as a function of what, right? Now, in momentum, you pick velocity, you expand them into three, three components, Vx, Vy, Vz, eliminate terms that are zero, and then ask yourself the non-zero term would be a function of what? In energy, because temperature is not vector, it is scalar. So you only have temperature, just one temperature, okay? So in energy, what you have to ask is, temp is whether f temperature is a function of what? In this case, it is cylindrical coordinate. If you point axis, z-axis, r-axis, like so. Of course, this is also r-axis. r-axis going from the center outward, right? I, I told you last time that the axis supposed to be pointed in the same direction of the flow, but in this system, there is no flow, okay? So it doesn't matter. Z can go this way or that going up and down, doesn't matter, okay? But you have to realize that one axis supposed to go along with the direction of the heat transfer. In this case, heat will be transferred in which direction? Okay, imagine. You put electri electricity in there, the Y heats up. Temperature outside is lower than temperature inside. That difference gives you energy transport. So difference in, uh, in temperature in this direction give you heat transfer in this direction as well. So right now we have heat transfer in R, in R direction, okay? Now we have QR going from center outward, right? So if you consider temperature, ask yourself whether it is function of R, zeta, or Z. Is temperature changing with respect to R? In this problem, it is. Is temperature a function of theta? Is there any change in temperature when you go this way? No. So it's not function of theta. What about Z? Is there any temperature change with respect to the length? Now, current or electrical current was given throughout the rod. So therefore, the rod is heated up uniformly along Z axis, okay? So therefore, temperature change in Z axis it's negligible. Actually, there's no temperature change in z-axis. There's only change or there's only temperature gradient in our direction. Okay? So it's not function of z. If 
temperature is a function of R only. The shell is supposed to be thin in R direction, supposed to be full size in theta and in Z. That means our shell is supposed to cover theta from 0 to 2 pi, cover Z equal to 0 to L. And R is supposed to be small, delta R. What does it look like? It has the thickness of delta R. So this is delta R. It covers 0 to 2 pi. That means this cir circle will be complete. It covers 0 to L in Z direction. So it goes down from top to bottom. This would be your shell. OK? And that's a heat in our direction. So actually, heat is vector. So it's going this way as well as this way. This is QR. OK? So we have QR going in at position R, going out at position R plus delta R. All right. So if you look into the balance, they're, both, they're supposed to be in term, inward term, and out term, OK? In, that ER, that's combined flux, at R times the area, OK? The area that this flux or this inward flux going perpendicular to this area, that area would be the circumference of this circle, right, multiplied by the height. So the inner circumference is 2 pi r, L. OK? So that would give you 2 pi L times R ER at R. For output term, it would be the same thing, except it takes place at R plus delta R. The circumference here would be 2 pi R plus delta R times L. Right? This is just the same as what we did for the problem in circular pipe, in the flow in circular pipe. So we combine R plus delta R here and R plus delta R over there to get 2 pi L R E R R plus delta R. Remember we did that in chapter 2. Okay, I told you that whenever you have cylindrical coordinate, you're supposed to follow this procedure. Otherwise, the differential equation will be very complicated. Then, the energy production. Of course, according to thermodynamics, there's no such thing as energy production, OK? But in this course, the term energy production means the non-mechanical work. Anything that is non-mechanical supplied into the system is considered as energy production. In this case, we supplied electricity. This is non-mechanical work supplied to the system. Of course, if, if you analyze this according to thermodynamics, this is your system. It is closed system. You supply electricity. That's work. That's non-mechanical work. Okay. So therefore, inside your system, internal energy is supposed to be increased. Remember, for closed system thermodynamics, delta E equal to Q plus W. Okay. Just like this, 
according to thermodynamics you get delta E equal to Q plus W you supply electricity which is non-mechanical work you add W system heats up because system has higher internal energy this delta E is consists of three parts according to thermodynamics potential energy kinetic energy and internal energy okay so you get delta PE delta KE delta U neglect this potential energy neglect this kinetic energy the increase the input in work give the increase in internal energy the in increase in internal energy makes the whole system heats up when temperature increase temperature of the system is higher than surrounding there'll be heat transfer backward that's the thermodynamics okay in terms of transport the non-mechanical work given here is considered as what we call energy production so whenever you supply energy there'll be something heats up inside and then causes this whole system to have higher temperature than outside then there'll be heat transfer backward same thing here you have delta U there'll be heat okay energy production term is associated with this term the rate of energy per unit volume and we determined earlier that it is energy per unit volume so energy production term here is supposed to be energy per time right but this is energy per time per unit volume we need to multiply by volume volume of what that's supposed to be volume of the shell we are doing a balance around the shell okay so the volume of the shell is the area of this ring multiplied by the length okay so area of the ring would be 2 pi r times delta r we also discussed this already instead of doing 2 pi r delta r minus 2 pi r or oh, I'm sorry instead of doing pi r plus delta r square minus pi r square that would be very complicated instead we will simplify this system by trying to say that this thickness is very very small if you cut it open instead you get square um, you, you get rectangular okay rectangular with the width of the 2 pi r and the thickness of delta r so this should, should give you cross section area of the ring over there then multiply by L you get volume okay energy per unit volume per time multiplied by volume you get energy per time in the same manner as other terms all right now we can put three terms into the balance okay in minus out plus generation equal to zero okay if I divide the whole equation by 2 pi L this 2 pi and L would cancel out if I divide the whole equation by Delta R I will get this term
plus R S E equal to zero. Okay? If I take this term up front, or if I remove this term, the whole term, to the right hand side, I get at R plus delta R subtracted by R. And take limit, delta R approaching zero, then you end up with differentiation of R E R by D R equal to R S E. Okay? Then, take a short note that combined flux is basically conductive flux or molecular transport flux added by convective flux which can be split into kinetic energy and enthalpy, we discussed this last time. We combine part of the flow work with internal energy to get enthalpy, okay? This multiplied by V would give you convective flux added by flow work term okay? So if I want our component of this combined flux. That would be QR, R component of conductive flux, plus everything up front here is scalar. So it doesn't matter whether you, you write it in R, theta, or Z component, this remains the same. But R component of this velocity is VR. And then R component of this, this is tensor dotted by vector, so you end up with the whole term to be vector, okay? R component of this vector start by R, R of this tau times VR plus R theta, V theta, and R Z Vz. Okay? Fortunately for this problem, there is no flow because the system is the rod itself. Okay? Inside the rod, the rod is pure solid, there's no flow. So, therefore, this velocity component is zero. Everything here will be zero, and you end up with ER equal to QR, okay? So I can replace this ER by QR term. Now if I integrate the equation, left hand side you get R Q R equal to R squared S E over two plus integration constant C one. In other words, Q R is equal to RSE over 2 plus C1 over R. All right? Of course, this equation is applicable for all system ranging from R equal to 0 at the center to R equal to capital R at the rim of this rod. Okay? 
But you see that at r equal to zero, this term becomes infinity, right? But in real life, heat can never be infinity. So this would be our boundary condition. Boundary condition will be stated at r equal to zero, qr will never come, never becomes infinity. That means the only thing that this can happen is C1 equal to zero. So if Z1 equal to zero, this term will be dropped, then the rest of the equation is applicable everywhere, anywhere. All right? So we will end up with QR equal to, according to Fourier law, QR is minus K dt by dr is equal to the rest RSC over 2. Okay? If you move minus k to the right-hand side and integrate, the left-hand side term would be t. Right-hand side, you get minus se over 2k. r integrated, you get r squared over 2 plus c2. All right? So this, in order to, f to find C2, we need boundary condition stating temperature at one particular position. And the problem stated at that the temperature at the surface is T0, okay? If temperature at the surface is T0, then this is our boundary condition. At R equal to capital R, T is T0. Plug it back in here, you get T0 equal to minus SE over 4K, capital R square, plus C2. You get C2 here by moving this term to the left-hand side. Okay? Or you can take these two equations, subtract each other, then you get T minus T0 equal to SE over 4K capital R square. Inside you get one if you take this equation. Oh, this is negative, so you get one first subtracted by R over capital R square. Right? You just take this equation subtracted by this equation so that C2 would cancel out. Rearrange the, the equation, you get this part. This would be temperature profile or temperature with respect to position R. Okay? Any question? Now, uh, may I erase this? <coughs> if I have a rod, This rod, okay? I heat it up. Temperature of the rod is higher than temperature outside, okay? Right now, we are saying if we are interested in the temperature of this rod, you get that equation for temperature profile. That means if I plot between temperature 
with respect to the distance in r direction is supposed to be highest at the center decay down by parabolic equation like this right according to that equation at r equal to 0 this term will be gone you get maximum temperature here okay at r equal to capital r the whole term turns to be 0 you get temperature here equal to t0 at the surface right Of course, now, if you shift your interest from system being the rod to system being air outside, then you see that the temperature of the air at this interface is T0 at the very beginning, at the interface between solid and air. Then go further, then temperature should decay like this, right? The further away from the rod, the less air will be disturbed by the temperature of the rod itself. So if you stay further away from the rod, the temperature of the air will no longer be disturbed by the presence of the rod itself. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, if I simplify the system a little bit, now, uh, oh, you have to realize now, if I change my interest from the system of the rod to the air, if I want to find temperature profile of the air, then your, your shell now will be shell in the air. Okay? So your shell still be cylindrical. It's still shell, but now it is located outside the rod. Like this. And when you integrate it, you expand from this interface outward. Okay? The flux will still be the same if you assume that the air outside does not move. If you say the air does not move, then there is no convective term. The rest will be conduction. The shell balance equation that you developed earlier is still applicable, right? The rest will be the same except boundary condition. Now, system being air, you need two boundary conditions. The first one is at this location. The second one will be at very long distance away from the rod. That will be R approaching infinity. And that air will be dis undisturbed. Okay? So exactly the same equation except boundary condition will be changed. Understand? Now, if I allow air outside to move, either by convective flow, you have wind, or by natural convection, the hot air heats up and being lighter than cold air, there will be a movement of air. Okay? And temperature profile will become nonlinear. Now to explain this a little bit easier, I would like to change the system from cylindrical coordinate to rectangular coordinate. If I consider hot body Assume temperature inside this hot body to be constant, let's say at T1. And temperature outside here of the air 
is cooler. So temperature profile drops like this. Let's say this is temperature T2. OK? For instance, if you have a wall of a furnace, if you're getting closer to the wall, you will feel that temperature of the air warms up. OK? Closer to the wall, temperature is getting higher and higher. Of course, if you go away from the wall, if you're very far away from the wall, temperature of the air remains the same as ambient temperature. OK? Now there'll be heat transfer from hot body to cold body. This would be your heat flux. If you consider the heat transfer inside the body, there'll be heat transfer from inside to the interface, and then heat transfer from interface to the air. These two fluxes are supposed to be the same, right? Now, if we are interested in temperature profile of the air itself, the calculation would be very complicated because of the nonlinearity of this function. You get nonlinear because the combined flux here is complicated with respect to velocity term. So if you allow convection, there will be velocity term here, there, there, there. That would make the equation to be nonlinear. All right? So to make life a little bit easier, there will be approximation, let's say, temperature like this. Oh, let me write down here. T1, all right, this is T1. Now, if I somehow draw this imaginary line and saying that outside this line, temperature is T2 or approaching T2, undisturbed. Inside this, actually it is nonlinear. If I want it to make, to, if I want to make this thing a little bit easier, I want to assume temperature profile here to be linear. All right? And the thickness of this imaginary line is delta. Now, this is one dimensional heat transfer. That means we have heat flux from hot body to the surface, and then heat flux from the surface through this film and from the foam out to the bulk. This is what we call foam resistance. And we have used this so many times in unit operation. All right? So basically, the theory of foam resistance is just the way, the simple way to, to make the problem a little bit easier changing from nonlinear function uh, nonlinear functions to be linear function okay and according to the equation whenever you get linear function in one dimension heat transfer it is about conduction right so this approximation we will neglect all the convective transport and create an equation as if the heat transfer is conduction only. So in this approximation, the heat flux remains the same as actual problem, except that now we represent this linear heat transfer, I mean linear temperature profile, by using conductive heat transport. And that, you get Q equal to K delta T.
okay? But conductive heat transport also depends on the thickness, inversely proportional to the thickness. So you take delta as a denominator to the conductivity of the film. Note that this K is conductivity of this film. Delta is the thickness of the film itself. Of course, delta is unknown. Okay? So if you take these two variables together, define what we call heat transfer coefficient H, then you get the familiar equation Q equal to H delta T. Okay? Of course, this is a little bit different than in unit operation. In unit operation, you have this equation, Q equal to H A delta T, right? This is a little bit different because this Q is heat flux. You take A as a denominator over here, you get heat flux. This is what we call Newton law of cooling. Again, it, it is just an approximation to make your life easier. You don't have to worry about nonlinearity of the temperature profile. Okay? Just as a uh, practice, I'm sure that you have seen this example before in unit operation three, but just another revision. If you have composite wall, and let's say this is x axis, you have x0, x1, x2, x3. Width is w, no, height, w, h, width is w. Okay? If this is a uh, composite wall for furnace, maybe. Inside, if this is hot gas in, f in the furnace, outside is a cool room temperature, air. Let's say temperature is Ta. If we assume that inside the furnace, temperature is constant at Ta, at around the surface, there'll be a decrease in temperature according to the film, okay? Then, through this wall is purely conduction. So, heat conduct through the wall, temperature becomes linear. It may be something like this, something like this, all right? And then, outside this wall, there becomes conduction again, I'm sorry, there'll be a convection on the interface. So there'll be nonlinear temperature, tr temperature profile here, and then further away, temperature remains constant if this temperature is Tb. Okay? Now, if we want to know this temperature profile we need to set up a system. At the moment, the system is the wall itself. Okay? If system is the wall, we set up the rectangular coordinate, x going to the right-hand side. We have to analyze whether t is a function of x, y, and z. Okay? If this is z, z-axis, temperature is uniform, upon this wall, so it's not function of z. This is y-axis, okay? If you say temperature across this surface are uniform, it would not be a function of either y or z. Temperature change with respect to x only. If temperature is changed with respect to x only, your shell in x direction is supposed to be thin. Your shell in y direction is supposed to cover 0 to w, 
and for C direction covers zero to edge. Okay, so that means your shell looks like this. And this is delta x. Right? So now you have heat flux going in and going out. This is E in x at x. E in x direction at x plus delta x. Taking a balance, input, that's E at x, multiplied by the area perpendicular to the flux. The area perpendicular to this flux is this area. So the area becomes W h. This is input term. Output term would be the same, except it takes place at x plus delta x, right? Generation term, there's nothing supplied to the wall. There's no electricity supplied to the wall, OK? There's no external force, so there's no generation term, no external force term. So this is just a simple balance. If you divide the whole equation by WH delta x, you get delta x as denominator. Taking limit delta x approaching 0, you end up with dEx by dx equal to 0. Okay, after integration, you get the combined flux to be constant, C1. Now, if you list EX, that will be convective transport, I'm sorry, conductive transport plus 1 over 2 rho V square rho h vx plus tau xx vx tau xy vy tau xz vz okay and there's no flow of anything inside the wall so velocity is zero everywhere Eventually, you end up with Ex being equal to Qx, OK? So now we have Qx equal to Ex equal to constant. And if I call this constant to be a flux Q0, I can do that as well. So if I call this region 1, region 2, region 3, and move this shell to region 1 first. So the balance for region 1 Q here is conductive transport. If I use Fourier law, it would be K dt by dx. Okay? So I can say that minus k dt by dx equal to q0 in region 1. Thermal conductivity of region 1 will be represented by k1. 
if you integrate this one, you get Q over K. This is minus. Integrate it from, let's say, if I call this temperature T0, T1, T2, and T3. Integration will be done from T0 to T1. On the right-hand side, you get integration of dx, starting from x0 to x1, right? If you integrate with limit like this, you don't need boundary condition. If you integrate it without the limit, you have to apply boundary condition later. Okay? From this equation, first left-hand side turns to be T0 subtracted by T1. Right-hand side, you get Q0 over K times X1 subtracted by X0. Okay? That's for region 1. So if you apply this integration to region 2, this is region 1. For region 2, it would be exactly the same except the integration limit. In region 2, you integrate from T1 to T2, X1 to X2. So you have T1 subtracted by T2. Everything on the right-hand side, this is K1, this is K2. X2 subtracted by X1. Same thing for region 3. Following? Now, if I erase this part, and start writing for hot gas. Of course, I can move this shell to the hot gas region and use the same balance. But in this case, if you repeat this process, the balance equation would be the same, but Ex in hot gas region is no longer Qx only. Because in gas region, you may have velocity. Okay? So that would be complicated. Instead, if I choose to do something else, if I choose to do Newton law of cooling, I will end up with similar equation. So in hot gas, I am going to use Newton law of cooling. Okay? So Newton law of cooling will be Q0 equal to HA in, in the left-hand side part, or you can call this one H0 delta T. The point about Newton law of cooling, you have to be very careful. Newton law of cooling does not have sign. You have to specifying temperature on your own, okay? In Newton law of cooling, you put high temperature first, subtracted by low temperature, and you have to be aware by your own that heat will be transferred from high temperature to low temperature. It does not give you a sign. Unlike this, for the balance, if you plug everything in here, 
and you get negative heat, that would give you that the heat flux would go in reverse direction with respect to your axis. This gives you direction on, on, on itself. Neutral law of cooling, on the other hand, does not. So you have to be aware to always put high temperature first. Okay? So high temperature in this case is Ta subtracted by T0. So if I rearrange the equation, I get Ta subtracted by T0 equal to Q0 over H0. Okay? That's for hot gas side. For air outside, the equation would be the same. For air, you get Q0 equal to H3, T3 subtracted by Tb. Higher temperature subtracted by lower temperature. Okay? And then you end up with T3 subtracted by Tb equal to Q0 over H3. All right. Now you have five equations. One, two, three, four, five. If you combine all five equations together, if you sum or add all these five equations together, left-hand side, this term will cancel. And T3 cancel here. So if you add them up on the left-hand side, you get Ta subtracted by Tb. Okay? On the right, all equations contain Q0. So you can take Q0 out. The first equation gives you 1 over H0, and then x1 subtracted by x0 over k1. Okay. Then just like what you did in unit operation three, the whole term here will be redefined as one over u. And u is called overall heat transfer coefficient. Basically, you sum convection on one side, conduction through the wall, and convection to another side together. Okay? So at the end, if you take rearrange the equation, you end up with Q0 equal to U Ta minus Tb, which is exactly the same as what you usually do in unit operation three, which is macroscopic balance. Okay? Any question? Of course, if your wall is not rectangular like this, if the wall is cylindrical, composite wall in cylindrical, you, you can do calculation in the same manner, except this definition will be changed a little because now you have the change in curvature. For instance, if you have composite wall in this direction, the thickness here, you need to incorporate curvature. So this combination of overall heat transfer coefficient will be a little bit different. 
but the concept will be the same. Okay? So in practice, we usually use this equation instead of microscopic balance, basically because we do not know how to measure temperature in each interface. There's no way to put a probe at the interface itself. And that will be much easier to use bulk temperature that can be measured on both sides to, tr to calculate heat transfer. And this overall heat transfer coefficient will be calculated or would be determined using experimental data or empirical equation. Okay? Any question? Now, in comparing between momentum transport and energy transport, conceptually, energy transport is easier than momentum because energy, uh, the equation is one single equation. It's not like momentum that you have three equations. It's, momentum is tensor, energy is vector, so vector is, of course, easier than tensor. But mathematically, energy transport is more complicated than momentum. So if you like math, good. In energy, you have a lot of math. I will show you in next example that if the system is no longer solid, now we will have this velocity term, and that would make everything very complicated. All right? And I cannot finish one example by the time that I have left here. So I will keep this example for the next time. All right? So if you have questions, please ask. Otherwise, we will stop now.